Lesson 12-6 is on locus, a set of points. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. A locus is a set of points, all of which meet a stated condition. The plural of locus is loci. We can use the description of a locus to sketch a geometric relationship. Here are three examples of loci in a plane. In example one, we will describe a locus in a plane. What is the sketch and description for each locus of points in a plane? For part A, we want the points one centimeter from a given point C. Let's begin by drawing point C. Now let's draw one point that is one centimeter from point C. Now let's draw another point, and another point, and another, and another. Let's draw two more. There's one, and two. Notice that these points create a circle, so let's go ahead and connect the points that are one centimeter from point C. So the locus one centimeter from given point C is a circle. For part B, we want the locus of points one centimeter from segment AB. Let's start by drawing segment AB. Now let's draw a point one centimeter from segment AB. Let's put in another point, and another, and another, and another. Let's put in one more point that's one centimeter from point B. When we connect these points, our locus looks something like this. Pause the video and do you try number one. How would the sketch change if a question asked for the locus of points in a plane one centimeter from line AB instead of segment AB? Remember the locus of points one centimeter from segment AB looked like this. When we draw the locus of points around a segment, we must also do the points that are one centimeter from the endpoints. If we have line AB, there are no endpoints because the lines go on forever in both directions. So the locus of points one centimeter from line AB would be the points above line AB one centimeter away and below line AB one centimeter away. Notice that the locus would be two parallel lines, each parallel to line AB and one centimeter above and one centimeter below. We can use locus descriptions for geometric terms. The locus of points in the interior of an angle that are equidistant from the sides of the angle is an angle bisector. In a plane, the locus of points that are equidistant from a segment's endpoints is its perpendicular bisector. Sometimes, a locus is described by two conditions. You can draw the locus by first drawing the points that satisfy each condition, then find their intersection. In example two, we will draw a locus for two conditions. What is a sketch of the locus of points in a plane that satisfy these conditions? First, the points equidistant from intersecting lines K and M. So let's begin by drawing intersecting lines K and M. Now let's draw the locus of points that are equidistant from intersecting lines K and M. Notice that these lines are the angle bisectors of these angles. Our second condition is the points that are 5 centimeters from the point of where line K and line M intersect. Let's begin by drawing in the point where line K and M intersect. Now let's draw the set of points that are 5 centimeters from that point. Now let's connect those points. Our second locus is a circle with radius of 5 centimeters. The locus that will meet both conditions, points that are equidistant from the intersecting lines K and M, and points that are 5 centimeters from the point where lines K and M intersect, will be those intersections of each of the loci. So this point, the purple and blue lines intersect. Right here, the purple and blue lines intersect. Here and here. So those four yellow points are our locus of points in a plane that satisfy the two conditions. Pause the video and do you try number two. What is a sketch of the locus of points in a plane that satisfy these conditions? First, the points equidistant from two points X and Y. Let's begin with points X and Y. Now let's draw the set of points that are equidistant between points X and Y. Our second condition wants the points two centimeters from the midpoint of segment XY. Let's go ahead and draw in segment XY. 
Now let's locate the midpoint of segment XY, and now we'll draw the points 2 centimeters from that point. The locus that meets both conditions will be this point where the purple circle intersects the blue line and this point. In example 3, we will describe a locus in space. For part A, what is the locus of points in space that are C units from point D? Remember in example 1, when we drew the locus that was 1 centimeter from a given point C, we had a circle because it was on a plane. Since we're working with a locus in space now, our new locus will be a sphere. That sphere will have center point D and a radius of C units. For part B, what is the locus of points in space that are 3 centimeters from line L? Remember in U try 1, when we had the locus of points that were 1 centimeter from line AB, it gave us two parallel lines with line AB directly in the middle of them. Since we're working with the locus in space, we're also going to have two parallel lines, but we're going to rotate those lines around line L giving us an endless cylinder. That cylinder will have a radius of 3 centimeters and a center line L. Pause the video and do you try number 3. What is each locus of points? For part A in a plane, the points that are equidistant from two parallel lines. Let's begin with the two parallel lines. The set of points that is equidistant from the parallel lines would be a line parallel to those lines halfway between them. For part B, in space, the points that are equidistant from two parallel lines. Using part A to help us out, if we start with the parallel lines and we want the set of points that are equidistant from both lines in space, it's going to be a plane that is halfway between those parallel lines. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. If you really know your stuff about loci, go ahead and try the challenge problem. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale from where you were when we began the lesson? Here's the answer for the challenge question. How'd you do?